Hi, so today I'm going to talk about 1.1.3 gears, pulleys, drives, and sprockets. Gears, pulleys, and sprockets are basically a way of changing rotational speed, direction, and amount of torque that are available. They are methods of transmitting rotational power from one point to another and manipulating the amount of torque and speed available for you uh, from the input and output. The major concept is uh, your ability to change that speed, direction, and amount of torque in the rotation. Gears are made up of interlocking teeth that interlock and as they turn push the teeth past one another and engage the next set of teeth causing uh, the next gear in the train to rotate. Any gear train contains two or more gears that are meshed. Uh, you can have as many gears as you want or as few as two. You have a driver gear, which is the gear that causes the motion or the input gear. And you have a driven gear, which is driven by the driver. Motions transferred from the driver gear to the driven gear. When you deal with gears, when two gears mate, they always change. They always turn in the opposite direction, such as the two gears in the top right-hand corner of the screen. If we need our input and output gears to rotate in the same direction, we can add what we call an idler gear in between the two gears. Uh, in the lower left, you see the two blue gears are chain turning in the same direction, and there's a gear in between them, meshing with both of them, that is allowing both of them to rotate in the same direction. That gear is not changing the gear ratio in any way. It is simply acting as a spacer and an idler gear uh, to change the direction of rotation back to the same as it was on the input gear. Along with that, any gear that is going to, any pair of mating gears must have uh, the same size pitch or the same size teeth. And when we talk about the size of teeth of gears, that is referred to as diametric pitch. And there's a formula to calculate diametric pitch, but most people just look it up in a book and understand that a 32 dp gear will mate with any other 32 dp gear. However, a 32 dp gear will not mate with a 20 dp gear. Diametric pitch. Um, larger gears always turn slower than smaller gears. Uh, the, if you spin a smaller gear, uh, at a certain RPM, the number of teeth that it spins by on the larger gear is, is always a partial rotation. Therefore, the larger gear uh, turns at a slower RPM. On the contrary, if gears share a shaft like they do in a compound gear train, the two gears on the shaft, on the same shaft, sharing shaft, rotate at the same RPMs or revolutions per minute. So things you need to know about gears and, and pulleys and sprockets for calculations. Uh, N stands for the number of teeth. D stands for the diameter of the gear. The Greek symbol you see there stands for angular velocity. Uh, I tend to not call that by its Greek character name, but to call it little butt. It looks like a little butt, and students tend to remember little butt better than the Greek character name. Um, and then torque is tau. 
Uh, we usually use subscripts for in and out. So as you see, an in and out, d in, d out, little butt in, little butt out, and torque in, torque out. Uh, always make sure you use those subscripts so that we can keep track of uh, your calculations as you go. So your equations, gear ratio uh, equals out over in, except for little butt, which is in over out. Um, so the number of teeth out divided by the number of teeth in equals gear ratio. Uh, the diameter out over the diameter in equals gear ratio. And torque out over torque in equals gear ratio. Uh, angular velocity in over angular velocity out. And we can use any of these, com these uh, formulas in conjunction with one another as an equality to solve for an item. For example, if we know the number of teeth out and we know the angular velocity in and out, we can calculate the number of teeth in because we are missing one variable in the formula. Okay, so if we were to calculate the gear ratio of the gears up above, there are 12 teeth to 6 on the in versus the out. Uh, there is a 4 inch diameter out, 2 inch diameter in. There is 40 RPMs in divided by 20 RPMs out. And there's 80 foot pounds of torque um, in or out. And there's 40 foot pounds of torque in. If you notice, all of those items equate out to a gear ratio of 2 to 1. So if we look at this, I want you to take a second and pause the video and calculate the gear, ratio, the gear ratio between gears A and B. Okay, you should have gotten number of teeth in over number of number of teeth out over number of teeth in, which is 12 out divided by 20 in, which would give you a gear ratio of 0.6. Again, pause the video, calculate the gear ratio between B and C. Should have gotten 5 divided by 12 for a gear ratio of 0.42. Now go ahead and take a second and pause the video and calculate the gear ratio between C and D. And you should have gotten 4 to 1, 20 divided by 5. Now the total gear ratio here, uh, we could do as 0.6 times 0.42 times 4, which equals 1. Um, now in a simple gear train like this, where each gear mates with the next, we can look at the gear ratio between the gear in, which is A, and the gear out, which is D. And as you can see, if you were to calculate that gear ratio, D being your out gear, A being your in gear, so D divided by A, 20 divided by 20 equals a gear ratio of 1 to 1. In a simple gear train, we can calculate driver gear and driven gear as the in and out gear is the first and last gear in the gear train because no gears share a shaft. If we were to change gear D to a 40 tooth gear, then what would the total gear ratio be? Go ahead and pause the video and do that calculation. You should have gotten 40 divided by 20, which is 2 to 1. All right, now we look at a compound gear train. A little bit more common, uh, we can achieve much greater gear ratios. Uh, a compound gear train in drives involves a gear, gears which share shafts. So if we look at this, our driver gear, being the green gear, meshes with the yellow gear, and you can see the yellow gear spins slower than the green gear because it's larger. Now we put the blue gear on the same shaft as the yellow gear and note 
they, they turn at exactly the same angular velocity or revolutions per minute. Now we mate the red gear with the blue gear and you'll notice the red gear turns even slower yet. So you can see visually the gear ratio reduction that we gain by going to a compound gear train. Okay. So if we look at this, what is the gear ratio between A and B? A being the in, B being the out. Pause the video, do the calculation. If you got 4 to 1, you are correct. Now we look at the gear ratio between C and D because C mates with D. B and C share a shaft carrying the same angular velocity, therefore there is no gear ratio calculation between B and C, only between A and B and C and D. So go ahead and calculate the gear ratio between C and D. You should have gotten two and a half to one. Now with a compound gear train, we multiply the gear ratios between gear sets. So the gear ratio for the entire gear train is 4 to 1 times 2.5 to 1 for a total gear ratio of 10 to 1. So in other words, gear A must rotate 10 times in order for gear D to complete one full revolution. Belts and pulley systems, the formulas are exactly the same. And I believe that this PowerPoint is slightly outdated or, or slightly off because you can have N as a pulley and belt calculation if you have a toothed synchronous belt. So in my, in my thoughts, the equations are exactly the same. It's always out over in, except for angular velocity, which is in over out. Um, and I don't see any reason that you can't have a toothed belt. Uh, now these calculations are basically for um, V-belts. One thing you will notice about belts and pulley systems is look at the red and blue gear, or blue pulley, and note the direction of rotation. With belts, any time the belt goes around the exterior of the pulleys, they rotate in the same direction. If, for some reason, you do the belt on the outside of, or the pulley on the outside of the loop of belt, they will rotate in the opposite direction. So let's look at the calculation. Six inch out divided by two inch in, or 30 RPMs in divided by 10 RPMs out, or we could do 55 foot-pounds out divided by 18 and a third foot-pounds in, and either any of the ways we cut it, we get a 3 to 1 reduction. Okay, Sprockets and chains, exactly the same as belts. Uh, we add back in the N in, N in and N out. Um, again, like I talked about, toothed belts, kind of a debate on whether they're more like chains or whether they're more like sprockets, or more like belts or more like sprockets. So, calculations are exactly the same. Don't feel like I need to go through these real heavily. You should get a gear ratio of 2 to 1. <clears throat> As a comparison about pulleys and sprockets, um, they are very similar and yet different at the same time. Um, pulleys, the advantage is they're quiet, they don't require lubrication, and they tend to be less expensive. Um, the disadvantage, a non-toothed pulley will slip. Now, depending on the situation, slippage could be a good thing. It can keep from breaking parts. Just depends on what you're trying to do. 
chain and sprockets, you have no slip, you got a lot greater strength, but you do have a higher cost, you need lubrication, and chains and sprockets tend to be much noisier. I'm going to go ahead and stop here for today so that you can go ahead and do your um, chains, pulleys, sprockets, and gears practice problems. Go ahead and do those and we will go over those on Wednesday in class. Those are your homework for tonight and they're due Wednesday before you come back to class and we'll go over the answers just like we have for the simple machine devices. I hope to be back in class on Wednesday.